And welcome to Purple Mouth. Today we're going to be talking about España. Spain has been making wine for thousands of years now. And like other old world wine producers, understanding their juice requires a little bit of studying. I wanted to focus briefly on Spanish aging laws and then open up a conversation to a few label terms that can sometimes be a little misleading. Ah, technical stuff, more wine. <laughs> okay, so Spain. Apart from the typical classification system of origins, they also have aging laws, which are used to denote quality. The theory is the more time in barrel and bottle, the better the wine. However, in the end, it's really just a way to see how long the wine has aged before it's reached your lips. The ranking goes like this. Joven, Crianza, Reserva, Gran Reserva. Joven, translation, young. Uh, this is for a wine that is released the year after its harvest. It's young. But this can be a good thing. It might or might not have oak. But for a lot of whites, Hoven is as good as it gets. It's crisp, it's fresh acidity, and it's a good thing. Crianza. Crianza means aging. Red Crianza wines have aged for at least 24 months, six of which were in an oak barrel. Unless it's Rioja or Riviera del Deuda. Because then it means 12 months in oak barrel. Gracias. It wasn't complicated enough. Crianza whites and rosés have aged at least 18 months, but not necessarily in oak. Reserva. Now we're talking quality, because reserva wines are only produced with years that had optimal growing conditions. Reds require at least 36 months of aging, 12 of which must have been in an oak barrel. Whites and rosés must have had six months in barrel and a total of 18 months aging. And lastly, we have Gran Reserva, which are only produced in exceptional years. These are going to be pretty. Reds uh, must have a minimum of 60 months, five years aging, 18 of those in barrel. The Gran Reserva white or rosé is a rarer find, they must have at least 48 months aging, six of which are in barrel. Joven Crianza Reserva, Gran Reserva. Are you following me? Are you staying with me? <laughs> Again, these terms are supposed to denote quality. However, a bad wine is a bad wine is a bad wine is a bad wine. Most decent reds do require aging. I mean, all of them. You know, they need to smooth out their wrinkles. Hence, the expression, aging like a fine wine. Okay, enough talk. Let's drink. I have a very well-known Torres brand called Sangre de Toro. Blood of the bull. Mm. And we're going to do a little experiment here. I've got your typical, typical cheap joven, and then I've got a nicer reserva. Now, the blends are different, so it's not going to be an exact comparison, but it's talk a little bit about quality and price. Sangre de Toro, they're, they're cheap rail. It comes from Catalonia, and it is made of granacha y carreñeña. Carreñeña is carreña. Now, it does not say joven anywhere. So you're saying, what? what? So if it's not... Explicitly written Crianza Reserva Gran Reserva, then it's probably just a young, cheaper wine. Go figure. Let's try it out. Very fruity, uh, very fresh. Not bad. Fresh cherries, a little bit of oak, but you know, I'm not sure if it ever saw a barrel, maybe just oak chips, you know. Who knows? Who cares? It's nice! It's nice! 
de reserva con grenacha, cariñeña, as well as sirá. And let's see what we think. Okay, so here we've got something a little more serious. There's a really good balance in between the oak and the fruit. Here's very fruit. And this has got some nice, like, wild blackberries. I know that because it's summer here and I've just been picking a whole bunch on the hill recently. So maybe it's on the brain. Nice toasty oak notes. I'd drink this with a deer tenderloin and some mashed potatoes. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's the West Virginia in me coming out. <laughs> This will go good with deer. Actually, this is better than I thought because the cork had me a little scared. I thought, oh, you know, wine came up to here. I thought maybe some oxygen had gotten into it, but honestly, it's, it's pretty nice. So here's the thing. This language for Spanish wines is legally binding, as is it in Italy and Portugal has some stuff going on, you know. But it's just to say that they're making sure that no trickery is going on here. You can't just slap Reserva on a label and charge more for it. But did you know that not all countries have to play that way? In places like Chile, Argentina, the US, New Zealand, South Africa, basically the new world, you know, they can do as, as they damn well please. Take this Tarapacá or Indomita Gran Reserva. Both are from 2015. They're babies. Originally, I was going to buy one and show it and be all Vanna White on you, but I don't want to pay $15. I don't want to that way. I don't fall for marketing ploys. And I'm not trying, please don't think I'm trying to single out these wines, these vineyards, but I'm just saying that this goes on everywhere. Now, the argument of these wineries' use of words like Gran Reserva is that they all the same denote quality. Perhaps these grapes were taken from a better block, um, from their best selection, but perhaps not. It could be that you are just paying more for mere words. God, I feel like I'm going all Donald Trump on you. I'm not, I'm not saying they're fake wines. I'm just saying that like perhaps, and only perhaps, you know, they're not all they're beefed up to be. My recommendation is that always keep in mind that a higher price or certain words don't necessarily mean quality. They don't necessarily mean a better wine. This is the same for many things in life, and I think we're all aware of it, but maybe sometimes we just need reminded. That said, I avoid cheap wine like the plague, but I would buy this wine. I would buy this wine and drink it after a bottle of this one, for example, you know, like downright. <laughs> but anyway, try the cheap, try the more expensive, try the even more expensive, and, and get to know what you like. It's all up to your palate. Don't like something because it's more expensive. Don't spout something out being like, mmm, yes, this cost me $20. More expensive wines generally are better. So everything I'm saying might have just been completely nullified. I'm saying that you might be paying more for mere words. Do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> My neck sense. Buy what you like. Don't pay too much for words. And que disfrute. Yeah? Because that's what it's all about. Salud!